The uh, late breaking trial today had a study looking at blood pressure reduction in black barber shops. This was a very novel study. Um, and that's why it was a late breaking trial and why it was probably in the New England Journal of Medicine released today. So there were 319 patients that the group randomized in barber shops. Let's ask the question of why. We know that African American men have the highest rate of hypertension related mortality and reaching that population uh, is difficult. It's also been shown that coming to a patient in the community can have a better effect on getting patient compliance, adherence, and even recognizing that they have the disease. So barbers, the barbers themselves would work with the patient once they were recognized to have high blood pressure. So the team would come out and measure their blood pressure. When they were recognized to have elevated blood pressure, they were then randomized into a treatment arm in which the barber recommended going to the primary care for um, treatment of high blood pressure versus an in-barber shop treatment. So the pharmacist, a doctoral pharmacist in hypertension would come to the barber shop. So each couple weeks when the, the men would go back for their haircut, they would get their blood pressure checked, the pharmacist would up titrate the medication, and they had point of care blood testing to check for kidney function. So instead of the patient coming to the physician, the team is going to the patient. So this is novel. It changes the paradigm. It also changes the paradigm in the whole team is as important, if not more important, than the physician. Now the pharmacist worked with the primary care in, in the treatment, and by law in different states, they have to do that. Pharmacists can't prescribe. So there was a team approach, and I think that's important. But it, they, what they found was that that group that had the in-barbershop treatment, if you will, with a pharmacist every two weeks had a dramatic 27% reduction, 9% in the other group, something that you haven't seen in other trials. Obviously, that's a pretty intensive thing to bring the whole team out into the community. The coordination required uh, is significant. Um, what to do with patients who don't have insurance, and that's more of a um, national political question. Hopefully it will be solved. So it um, could be applicable. We need to know what the costs are going to be, but it does raise the question and hopefully the answer that you don't necessarily have to have physicians, but the whole team working on this. And the more we get our healthcare providers, our nurse practitioners, pharmacists, the whole team involved in patient care, the better. Being culturally sensitive to what's important to the patient and going to the patient when we can, hopefully we can expand that. The implication that we need to understand a community and what the community needs are, so the sense of inclusion, diversity, and being culturally sensitive, um, a Hispanic community or women or Asian community or name another uh, community may have different needs and a different niche that you can, where you can reach them. But it's, it's more a matter of reaching the patient where they are rather than asking them to come not only physically where we are but culturally where we are.